You see, if we had des decided to quit, it definitely would have had a full impact on our children. Our children know nothing except this business and the lifestyle that it's given them. You know, and I really believe that even though children don't understand what security is, when there's a lack of it in a home, they grow up with, with feelings inside of them that they're always searching, always looking for something. But because they watched us struggle, and they watched us pick ourselves up when the going got rough, and they saw us go and do things when we didn't feel like doing it, it has built in them such a strong sense of character that money will never buy. You know, they can look at their dad, and they could call him their hero. They can look at a mom and dad that are in love with each other, and that is missing in so many homes. I realize that if it wasn't for this business and how our children have seen us pick ourselves up when we didn't want to get up anymore, when they've seen us have distributors in our home, and, and try to be up for them, try to be positive for them when we weren't feeling positive ourselves. You see, your children are watching every little thing that you do. And your children can sense the security of seeing a mom and dad working together toward a common goal. That's what being diamond means to me. That's what the lifestyle of a diamond is, is knowing that you're, you're doing what's right. You're doing what you know you're supposed to be doing when you don't feel like doing it all. You see, Jerry and I have always had this nightmare, and every time we feel like we might want to throw in the towel, when we feel like we might not want to go on another day, we think of a time in the future where somebody might come to our children and say, would you like to see this business opportunity? And they would, and they'd get all excited about it, but they'd remember back when, when their parents were in something like that, but they gave up, they quit. And they'd come to us and say, why did you quit? It's such a great opportunity. And you see, this was always in the back of Jerry and my mind whenever we wanted to quit, whenever we would look at our children and know we were building the business for them, but then try to use them as our excuse not to. You see, when they were hanging on our legs as we were trying to walk out the door, I would forget that we were building the business for them. And I would just remember how I was not liking leaving them. And we took the reason why our children, that we were building the business, and we were making them our excuse why we shouldn't do it. And you see, you always have to have that tunnel vision. And what happens is when, you, when your dream starts slipping from you, when it starts slipping away, that's when you have to get into the tapes, and that's when you have to get into the books, and that's when you have to realize how important the system and the functions are to keep your vision ahead on your dreams. That's why it's important to go sit in those cars, to try those rings on, to go through those homes. And it's not just the acquisition of these material things that's important, but it's what you become as you're achieving them. You see, lifestyle of a diamond would be nothing if Jerry and I stayed the same when we first saw the plan, but it's as we changed internally. It's when we took this business that was out there somewhere, and it came from out there, and it got into our heads for a couple years. And we knew why we, we were supposed to be building the business, and we got into the motion of doing the things that we were supposed to be doing, but it was until we took the business from our hands and our head, and it came into our hearts, that it actually started exploding for us. And you see, with the system and what you have available and seeing all these beautiful diamonds and, and emeralds up here on the stage in front of you, is they make it more real for you. They make it more believable. And why do we do these things? It's just to get you to believe even more that you can have them happening for yourself. You see, we also came from a past where we would look at our bills every month and wonder where we were going to get the money to pay for them. Our bills covered pages like this that we put up in our bedroom closet door. And you see, that was our first goal as we entered the business. It wasn't for rings. It wasn't for cars. It wasn't for new clothes. All we wanted to do was to pay our bills. And I know that if we hadn't built this business, we wouldn't have smaller pages. Our pages of our bills would probably be a lot longer. But because Jerry went out there and did what he had to do, we have our bills paid for by the first of the month every month. You know, we're able to travel to beautiful places like the United Kingdom and, and Ireland and France and Hawaii.
and we're able to travel to these places with special people like you. You know, so many of you, when you sent your cards to us, said, thanks for, for spending time with us, but I, we hate to know that you're leaving your children behind. But you see, our children have come with us on this trip, and they're enjoying you. They're enjoying the places that we're seeing. And you see, that's what this business has to offer. And we want you to be a part of that so much. You know, and we found out by building the business what positive and negative is all about. You know, we, I can remember not even realizing that we were negative when we were negative. And you see, by listening to the tapes and reading these books that they tell you to, to read and listen, tapes to listen to, we found out that we could grow, that we could change, that we could become bigger. And we could have friends all over the world. I don't know if all of you were here last function that we were here, but Morris Goodman changed your life, didn't he? The Miracle Man. I know he did because he did that to our lives too. We spoke at a Diamond family reunion the weekend before last weekend that we spent here. And as we were walking down the hall, we saw this man standing, signing all these books. And we looked at him, and Jerry and I just smiled because there was Morris Goodman, a friend that we met because of this business. And we went over to him and hugged him, and we said, Morris, guess where we're going next week? And he said, I bet you I could tell you. I see the sparkle in your eyes. You're going to England, aren't you? And I said, we are. And he said, I just want you to tell all those people that have touched my heart hello and how much I love them. See, he not only touched your hearts, you touched his heart in a big way. And he will never forget you. He will never forget the feeling he felt as he walked across the stage, just as Jerry and I will never forget the warmth that radiates from your heart. You see, you have to realize how special you are and how you're touching the people all around you. What does the diamond lifestyle mean to us? You see, I can remember living in that little itty-bitty trailer, wondering if this was what it was going to be like from now on. Jerry would always talk big dreams, but we never thought we'd have the opportunity of making them happen. And yet, because of this business on our 10th wedding anniversary, we moved into a 23-room English tutor that has, it could have six to eight bedrooms, it all depends what you want to do with the rooms, but it has nine bathrooms, and it's something I never thought that we'd be walking through. But you see, we had a dream when we were living in that trailer, and I can remember on our refrigerator putting a dream of a, of a little bit of a larger home on that refrigerator, and I can remo remember moving into that home, and the very day that we moved into the first home that we bought, on the bulletin board, I put a, a picture of an English tutor. And I can remember people saying to you, Polly, aren't you ever satisfied? Look at the beautiful home you live in now. But you see, what we learned about dreaming is once you stop dreaming, once you stop wanting to reach for something more, you start, you start dying. And I was happy with where we were living because I had learned to become happy with being Polly Hartis. And that was probably one of the most major accomplishments I achieved by becoming a diamond. That's being happy with where you were, no matter where you were. Being happy when you were 1,000 PV. Being happy when you were 100 PV level. It's being happy with the journey. Being happy with the accomplishing. And because of that, because we had the vision of, of wanting more and more and more, because we could touch more lives by doing that, we were able to, to do things like moving into our dream home, by having new cars sitting in the driveway, new Jaguars, new Mercedes, whatever it is we wanted, whatever it is that you want, you could have. But the most important thing to me was being able to touch people that mean the most. And that's like being able to touch my mom. You know, my dad died quite a many few years ago, and that left my mom in a town all by herself. Most of her brothers and sisters also passed away, and Jerry and I lived like four and a half, five hours away from her. And I knew my mom was lonely, and I knew my mom missed the children, but I also know my mom was very proud. So we had to kind of trick her into, into coming up and living in our area. So this one particular time, I called her up, and I said, Mom, I says, I need you to come up and help me watch the kids. We have to go somewhere. Can you do that? And she always loved to feel needed, and she would always pop on a bus and come up to our home when we, 
wanted her to watch the children. Well, I tricked her because what I really wanted to do was take my mom dream building. Now, don't picture this as me doing this with my mom, but you picture this doing with this with somebody that you love. And my mom came up and I said, oh, mom, last minute plans were changed. So let's fill our day doing something fun. Let's go looking at houses. And she looked at me and she said, why would you want to do that? Look at this beautiful home you live in now. I said, I know, but I know somebody that's looking for houses. And I think I need to, to help them out. So would you come with me? And I can remember her, taking her through some of these homes. And I could see her eyes light up. And I'd say, Mom, do you like this? Yeah, this is great. You know, and this one particular house, her eyes lit up so much. And I could just see she would go around to these rooms and she said, Oh, I'd put this here and I'd do this here. Well, I knew we found something for my mom. So she went home after spending a few days of doing this with me. And I called her about a week later and I said, Mom, guess what? And she says, What? Do you need me to come up and watch the children? And I says, I don't need you to come up and watch the children, but I need you to come up. I said, remember that home that you got all excited about for friends of ours? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, the keys are sitting here on my counter. Would you like to come up and move in? And Jerry and I went out. My mom never really had furniture that wasn't second hand or wasn't something that was very inexpensive. And Jerry and I furn had so much fun furnishing the home for her. And my mom always drove beat up cars, something that she could get very cheaply, something that could just take her to work and back. My mom always dream dreamt of having a Cadillac. That's something that's a big deal over in the States. It's like having a Jaguar or a Bentley here. She wanted a Cadillac. She knew she'd never be able to have it, but she always thought that someday she'd like to at least be able to drive one. Well, as my mom moved up, in her driveway was a powder blue Cadillac, which had the keys in it, too. You see, this business has given us that. And this business has enabled us to take her on many trips. You see, I can remember her struggling with me as we were growing up, trying to be both a mom and dad to my brother and I. And, I, you know, it just makes me feel good inside to let her know that it didn't matter how we grew up. We turned out okay. You know, and that, that we found people that were an extended family and that she was part of that family. And I want to tell you something that Ruth Salloway said to me that meant so much. She said, Polly, she said, as we came up and we watched, you know, we came to your house and Fred Linda's house and Bill and Leslie's house and we saw all those beautiful things in New York City. The thing that meant probably the most to Neil and I was being able to sit down and talk to your mom and just to see the pride that she had in her heart because you and Jerry are in this business and have us as friends. She said that to me meant more than anything on that trip because we want that for our moms too. We want them to feel proud of us. And you know, I look back and think of all the times that I wanted to quit and I thank God that somehow he kept that little mustard seed of hope alive inside of us. And you see, you have to realize that this, these things that I'm talking with you about tonight aren't something way, way off in your future. They can happen. They can happen quickly. If you just stay in there and you, you just don't give up, you just keep fighting the fight because inside each creation of God, there's a striving to become something more, to become something better because he created you as being dreamers. And you see, a lot, when I look back and I had such a hard time learning to dream, I had to take the small part of me, which was, I wanted Jerry proud of me. I wanted him to be able to look at me and say, that's my wife and I'm proud of her. You see, that was a small part, the flickering inside of me that kept me moving on because I didn't want him to, to leave me by the wayside. I wanted to be a part of a team that was moving on and I wanted him proud of me. And that's what kept me going when I felt like I was satisfied with where I was. That's what kept me dreaming when I didn't want to dream anymore. So cherish these visions that you have. Realize that you'll always have two voices inside of you. One is the voice of fear and the one is the voice of faith. And whichever one you're having conversations with the most will cause the other one to die out. That's why these functions are so important because they increase your faith. 
They increase your ability to dream. They increase your visions. So sacrifice what you are now for what you can become. Look at Jerry and I's examples of people that are just like you, that have frustrations, that have doubts, that have fears, that want to quit, that can look at each other sometimes and say, I hate you, and mean it, but yet go on the next day and realize that that was just an emotion, that was just a feeling of the moment. But we were able to pick ourselves when we didn't want to and go on. We were able to fire that Jerry Hartice that wasn't putting it together and hire a new one that would get out there and pick up that phone when he didn't want to. When I would take those products and, and knock on somebody's door and see if they wanted to buy them when that was the last thing in the world that I wanted to do. Because if God gives you another day, realize that he has a definite purpose for it. Realize that he won't tease you with the dreams. So count your blessings just as I can stand up here tonight and say what the me, being diamond means to me. You know, sure you see the flash of the diamond rings, but what's more important is the flash of the diamond sparkles that I see in each and every one of your eyes. Because I know you're that close to making it happen big. Do you believe that? Do you feel it in this room? You're that close to making it happen. So experience that small amount of hope so that your hope can grow and it can be converted to faith. And when you experience faith in your life, you're going to find out that miracles will occur and that you'll be able to stand up here one day and share what being diamond means to you. And in closing, as I bring Jerry on, I want to read a card that was sent to me. And I, we received many cards just like this. But it has a cute saying, and it is, Yesterday is only a dream. You'll never get it back. Tomorrow is only a vision. It can't be guaranteed. All you have is today. If you procrastinate, you'll lose it. But if you live today with heart and soul from beginning to end, yesterday will become a dream of happiness, and tomorrow will become a vision of hope. Remember what I said this afternoon, There but for me go I. Make it happen for you in a big way. We love you. And here's Jerry. Ow! Oh. I'll tell you what it's like to be a diamond. It's being able to be married to a beautiful gal like that. Not only is she pretty, she's smart. I don't, can't figure that out. Why me, Lord? But thank you anyways. <laughs> it is exciting to be here. And, you know, you think of different things. It's, you know, the, the different things that happen, especially through this week, has been very exciting. In fact, Dave Butler and I were out shopping one day at, at a chemist. And Dave had a cigar with him. And he was puffing away on this cigar. And the, the chemist came over to me and said, Sir, I'd appreciate if you would... Uh, not smoke that cigar in here. And Dave said, well, you sell them in here, don't you? He said, yeah. He said, but we also sell laxatives. And we don't like them used in here either. <laughs> so you have people that, you know, miscommunication. It's kind of like, I tell, <laughs> y'all having fun? This is a whole lot better than being in jail, isn't it? <laughs> but you know, some folks are in jail mentally because they, they, they're their own worst warden. You know, they, they keep themselves under the gun, and, they, and I think of how we started in the business, you know, as a teacher and a coach, and I liked doing very much what I was doing as a career and a profession. I enjoyed working with the students. It was the job I didn't like. Uh, no, but I, I, I really like kids because I used to be one of them, and I used to go to school with them, in fact, and, uh, you know, and, and I really enjoyed that aspect of life and what we were doing there and the fun that we were having, but also realized a lot of the big things that we always wanted to do were never going to come true. And you know, you think back when you were 18, 19, 20 years old and all the great visions and the hopes and the dreams that we had, oh, we'll do this and we can do that. And then all of a sudden we get married and reality sets in. And reality is nothing more than, you know, where we begin to tell our, where we begin to rationalize as to why we don't have those nice things. And I like to take that word rationalize and break it into two different words. Rational lies. You know, we, 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 we sort of sell ourselves a bill of good that maybe we can't have that, so we tell ourselves a rational lie that I don't want to live in a big house like that because if I did, people would know we have money and they'd come to rob us. 
so we're safer living in this little caravan. They know we're broke. They won't come here for nothing because they ain't going to get nothing. I, saw, I thought it'd be nice to have a nice car, but then I realized someone might ding, you know, ding the car or bang it up or something like that. And I thought, well, if they run into my old 66 Chevrolet, it won't matter. No one will notice because it already was, you know, been through the war. In fact, it didn't even have a reverse. You know, it would only go forward. And Polly said to me one time, she said, how come our car doesn't back up? I said, because from where we are, we don't want to go backwards. This is about as far back as we'd like to be right now, honey. And, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, in fact, we were so poor at that time, we couldn't even afford to pay attention most of the time. I mean, <laughs> you know, we just had to ignore people a lot. I grew up with 13 brothers and sisters, which was not a world's record, but it wasn't a hobby either. Uh, in fact, I tell people I never slept alone until I got married. And, <laughs> and then y- y'all know what, what that's like. And, and so on. And, uh, you know, very humble beginnings. And, and I think a lot of folks have started the same way. But we had some hopes and dreams. And mom and pop may not have had much financially, but they sure had a tremendous amount of character. Had a tremendous amount of persistence and desire to work. And I admired a lot of those qualities that they just wouldn't quit. They didn't know the word quit. Didn't even know it existed. In fact, they cut out quit and can't. They both start with K, so they looked them up in the dictionary and eliminated them both. It was really easy. Just rip out that page. You know, they, they just don't exist, you know, as part of their vocabulary. In fact, if you say to one of our children, are you going to quit or I can't do that? Say, oh, I'm sorry, Dad, I forgot. I did. You don't use that word, you know, because you, you realize that you can do all things. All things are possible if you only believe. And I was thinking how we got started. I sat there and I watched the plan the first night. And it looked kind of intriguing to me. And I actually, we came to the meeting about a half an hour late. And I went into the fridge and pulled out a can of beer. And went back in. I sat down and watched the man showing the plan. 